So maybe this is just a reminder as a video. If you're watching this and you have felt isolated and you need to, you, you don't know how to go and make friends and you are spending a lot of your time on YouTube and Twitch and what have you because you don't have a friend group around you, you might not even know how to form one, do yourself a favor. Go to a place that is public, whether it be a bar, a card shop, or an arcade. Go to a place where there are people and find a medium, something that can be used to bridge the gap between you and another person. I'm going to stop distracting myself. We got some stuff to talk about, and it's very important that we do that. Because as we enter the new year, we need to talk about loneliness. We need to talk about the uh, proclivity that a lot of us have to do to isolate. And I'm not saying this to try to take a dig at people who are more introverted than the rest of us. I'm doing this because I think it's important that we talk about each other's mental health. We're going to get to the fan art section first, and then we are going to get into the actual topic at hand. The first one here is from Wolfos. So I didn't start this expecting to get as detailed, but here's a quick Cirrus wondering. Uh, I've been listening to a bunch of 40K stuff, so may start a Cirrus Space Marine. So this is a an AI-generated piece with a few hand touch-ups afterwards. Throwing that out there so that we know. And then the next bit we have here is from uh, Naginoe101. My first attempt at a Cirrus. Uh, been out of practice drawing characters. Hold on, let me go ahead and get that set up correctly. The next one we have here is from Goddess of Madness. First fan art, started drawing again this year after 13 years of not doing so. This onesie almost looks like an Evangelion outfit. Like this is a this is a plug suit, almost. I like it. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it in the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And with that, Let's go ahead and get into the actual topic at hand. So I need to talk about your isolation. And what I mean by that, not just you, I don't think a lot of people realize that some of the reasons that you feel as lonely, as isolated, as cut off from the rest of the world as you might be, some of it has to do with society. Some of it is society's fault. There is that. Um, there is a thing called a walkable city. Uh, if you are not in a walkable city, the likelihood is that you probably isolate in the suburbs uh, more often than not. Pack somehow packing a bunch of houses together uh, does not actually yield people engaging with each other more often. It actually leads to them doing it less. It's a very weird phenomenon, but it's an observable phenomenon. So how do we actually handle loneliness? We can, ex we can accept that there is a huge amount of that that is, you know, society's fault, uh, that it came down on us, and we just kind of have to deal with it. Said Lima Peru's like that. That that sucks, Mako. We can do that, and we can isolate ourselves further, and then just constantly blame it on the society that created the scenarios that led to us being more isolated. That's a thing we can do. We can do that. I'm just going to ask you to stop. I'm going to ask you to not. And here's my reasoning. I've talked before about third places before. And if you don't know what a third place is, let me go ahead and go over the concept of what each first, second, and third place is first. And then hopefully this will bring things into context. And this will all wrap up into loneliness. And yes, it's as you've probably seen from the title and thumbnail. Also card games, card game stuff. So I've done a video on this before, uh, but it was a bit different. Let's talk about what a first place is. A first place is where you live. It's where you go to sleep at night. My first place is my house. This is where I wake up in the morning. This is where I cook my meals. Um, and then what is a second place? Well, a second place is where you work. A second place is the place you go to uh, to make a living. This is the place that you, you leave your house for that you are compelled to go and do. This is the place you don't really get a choice in going to. Now, a second place is a super useful tool in alleviating one's loneliness. 
Reason being, if you are in a second place, there are usually other people around you. You're in an office cubicle, uh, you're at work at a restaurant, uh, you might happen to work at a hotel, or really any, any number of places, you are one employee over many, or one employee with many. This gives you a natural outlet to engage with other people, spend time with other people. Uh, and yes, if you volunteer, you, there, like, all, there's plenty of ways. There's plenty of ways. Going to work is a second place. Now, this creates a bit of a problem, though. COVID happened. COVID happened. Now, why did that affect everything? Well, since COVID has happened, uh, we have a bit of an issue. A lot of second places simply don't exist anymore. They don't. A lot of second places now exist inside the home. Second places, by contrast, are places where you are supposed to be able to go out and meet people that you work with. With the advent of COVID, a lot of second places simply don't exist anymore. A lot of jobs are work at home jobs instead of office jobs now. And this can be seen as a very, very good thing people not having to drive all the way to work, people uh, not having to spend that money in gas, people, uh, people who are disabled being able to work a lot easier from home. That can be seen as a very good thing, and it is, but it means we don't have as many second places. This means one of our avenues for interacting with people has been cut off. And I'm not saying that everybody should be dragged into an office. By no means. Those, uh, those environments can be absolutely horrendous to be in. But when we've lost our second places and we've turned workplace into home play, now we have to ask ourselves, okay, well, where do we socialize? For a lot of people, that might be someplace on the internet, but I'm going to be honest, that's really not as much of a replacement as some people might think. Spending time with friends on the internet is a perfectly fine thing to do, but at the same time, for a lot of people, not everybody, but for a lot of people, spending time only with friends on the internet does not get rid of that loneliness, that isolation. It's very fun to spend time with your friends on the internet while you are on the internet with them, but it's very hard to replace the feeling of, say, going out to a restaurant with your buddies or inviting a bunch of friends over to sit down and play video games. It's really, really difficult to replace that specific feeling. Not impossible but it's very difficult. You do need some people in real life. Not to mention, it's very hard for your internet friends to do things like drive you to the hospital if something happens. That is not to discount friends you have on the internet. But this is where the third place is supposed to come in. Now, the third place usually is the town square or you know a local pub or something like this. The third place is the place you go to that is not home or work. The place you go to that lets you get away from the house, get out of your comfort zone, but also get away from work, get out of whatever is making you function uh, day to day. Now, when you are in these third places, this is where your super spontaneous meetings can happen. This is where your time meeting new people, having chance encounters, this is where that happens. For some people, their third place is a religious organization, a church or something. Uh, for some people, their third place is a card shop. That's my third place. And for others, their third place may be a bar or a pub. These are where their chance encounters. Now, there's a problem, though. There's a type of loneliness that some people encounter and have that they are not able to resolve very easily. And that's the loneliness of having a partner or not having a partner. Now, there are ways to get around this, uh, dating apps, for instance, but as somebody who has used quite a few of them in recent months, those are pretty fucking awful. Those are pretty goddamn awful. And as speaking as somebody who has had long distance relationships, those also don't really work as a replacement for this either. A lot of times the long distance of a relationship can magnify the loneliness that you feel because that partner that you could have with you when you go to bed at night simply is not there. This is, again, like with everything, not to, not to disparage people who have long-distance partners. I've had long-distance partners. I've dated people in other countries and only been able to see them once or twice throughout the, uh, the length of the relationship. Been there, done that. I've had those experiences. I've lived that. And places like card shops may not be the best place for you to get in contact with people to, to date, mind you. But we're not here to talk specifically about dating. We're just talking about the fact that 
when you're not going out to work, when you're not going out to bars, when you're not going out to shops, when you're not going out to locations outside of your house, is it any wonder that you don't get in a relationship with someone? Is it any wonder that you find yourself being and feeling as lonely as you do? Is it any wonder that a lot of people end up finding themselves enraptured in parasocial relationships with YouTubers and streamers and other online personalities? Is it any wonder then when you have all, when you feel like you have no options for meeting other people that you don't meet other people? I mentioned dating apps and I want to drill into them for just a second. A lot of dating apps and, and Red Joker pointed this out in the chat and it, and it is true. A lot of dating apps are built to keep you single. Some dating apps like OkCupid uh, will actually keep your communications with people in like a queue or a line as opposed to being instantaneous, asking for you to spend money to move up in that queue. Apps like Bumble try to pitch themselves as having a, an environment where, oh, women will message you first, don't worry. Uh, this is the dating app for you if you happen to be uh, a lonely guy and you don't know how to initiate conversations with people. But again, speaking from experience, getting somebody to actually message you on those apps even when you match can be kind of rare. Not impossible, but it can be. Dating apps like Meet Me are completely and totally flooded with people who are bots and scammers and what have you. And actually, I have a video that I'm going to be working on about romance scams, where I'm actually going to chronicle everything that happened from one of the interactions I had on Meet Me, bleeding into a couple of interactions on Snapchat. And hopefully it'll work as a warning for people going forward. Apps like Tinder end up being geared towards hookup culture as opposed to finding a legitimate partner that can, you know, help fill that lonely void in your life. And even then, the time you're spending on those dating apps exclusively trying to find somebody to date, that can compound things. You might find yourself looking for a relationship for the sake of having a relationship as opposed to finding a relationship with somebody who's truly compatible with you. And this is where, again, the third place comes in. If you're desperately looking for friends, you'll find yourselves just taking people in by default, whether it be friends, dating, what have you. You'll take people in by default merely because they can fill that void for you. But you're not going to be finding the kinds of people that actually compliment you. Not all the time, anyway. Sometimes you can get lucky, and if you do, then that's amazing. I have had a four-year-long, very fulfilling relationship up until the end uh, off of a dating site. Like, you can have those connections. But by and large, for the majority of people, we're not going to find those connections there. You need to get out. You need to go and meet people. I've advocated for local card shops before, and I'm going to do it again in this video because I know there are people who are just, they feel isolated, and I want to point out that there's a way to get around that. The cheapest card game I can think of to get into and play with people is Magic the Gathering's Commander format. There are people that will accept you bringing an entirely proxy deck to a table, and there are people who will scale their decks down if you happen to only be working with a starter deck. A, a bit of information that I have found through just experimenting with myself, is sometimes the problem we have with communicating with people is that we don't know how to initiate communication. We don't know how to start the conversation with someone. Let's say that you're out at a bar and there's a really cute girl uh, at the bar or a really cute guy, what have you, and you want to walk up and, and message them, not message them, it's real life, you're, send, you're, you're talking to them. You want to go and say hi to them. You want to go and sit down and start a conversation with them, but you don't know how because you don't know anything that they like. You don't know anything about them. You have no information whatsoever. have you. So how the fuck do you do that? Well, usually the best way to do that is to have a medium. Sometimes that medium is having a friend introduce you to the person. Sometimes that medium is, when I mentioned card games, sitting down at the table to play a game with them. Sometimes it can be the poker table. Sometimes it can be the easiest conversation starter that anybody has ever used at a bar ever. Hey, can I buy you a drink? You need a medium. You need something that bridges the gap between you as an individual that doesn't know anything about them and them as an individual who doesn't know anything about you. And it can be very hard to do that, especially if you've spent years 
isolated in your own home, not communicating with other people, not keeping up with whatever trends people care about in terms of fashion or walking around or even slang, it can be hard to have a conversation with someone when you have spent so long not having conversations with people. And trust me, there is a huge difference between the conversations you have in real life and the conversations you might have on Discord. On Discord, it's very easy to open up a notepad document, write out your entire thing, and then copy paste it into Discord, and then press the send button. It's, it's like taking a shot of medicine real quick. It sucks for a quarter of a second, and then it's over. Whereas you can't shortcut conversations like that in real life. So maybe this is just a reminder as a video. If you're watching this and you have felt isolated and you need to, you, you don't know how to go and make friends and you're spending a lot of your time on YouTube and Twitch and what have you because you don't have a friend group around you, you might not even know how to form one, do yourself a favor. Go to a place that is public, whether it be a bar or a card shop or an arcade. Go to a place where there are people and find a medium something that can be used to bridge the gap between you and another person. That gap bridger can be a drink at a bar. It can be a card game in the middle of a card shop. It can be as easy as finding a, an arcade cabinet for House of the Dead in the middle of an arcade and seeing somebody that you fancy walking around the arcade, walking up to them and saying, hey, I need a player too. Could you be my player too for a couple of rounds? It can be that simple. Find a medium. Find a bridge. If you can find that medium, if you can find that bridge, it'll be way easier for you to find friends, for you to find partners, and for you to scrape that loneliness off of your shell and break out of it. It's not an easy thing to do. That's what the medium's for. It's there to make things easier for you because it's not easy. But it can be easier if you're willing to find a thing that somebody else likes and engage in that with them. Find a game. Find a drink. Find something. You can do it. So, I throw all that out there because I know there are people in my audience that need to hear that. And hopefully, that helps. And remember... If you need any kind of advice, if you need any kind of assurance, there is a Discord. I have a Discord. There's a large community there of people who are willing to talk you through how you are feeling and how you're doing. Worst case scenario, all else fails, my DMs are always open. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please don't let yourself get too terribly isolated. Please take care of yourself. And as always, everyone... Insert end of video tagline here.